Good evening, everyone. This is a review of the quizzes that we have taken the last three weeks. The first um, quiz was on um, software architecture and the deployment of uh, IT information technology. So the first question says, when hosting your website on a cloud, you need to determine the amount of space you want to rent before you sign the contract. Well, first we have to think about what's the cloud. We said that the cloud is getting uh, an IT service uh, over the internet. And it's very well known to be consumption-based pricing. So you pay based on your consumption. So it doesn't make sense then, the number A, it says, it says you need to determine the amount of space you want to rent before you sign the contract. Actually, one of the advantages of the cloud is that it is scalable. So you don't need to determine the amount of space. It, it At the end of the period or of the cycle, it will charge you based on your consumption. Once space is allocated to you, you cannot scale it up. That's obviously incorrect because, as we said, you can scale up or scale down based on your consumption. You can scale up or scale down define, depending on demand, so you only pay for what you consume. That's the right answer. You pay a fixed rate every month irrespective of usage. That's not correct. So the, the, the correct answer is C. The second question says, choose all that are applicable to cloud hosting. Scalability, instant access to resources. So as soon as you um, pay membership or become um, a customer of the cloud, then you have as instant access to, to re resources. Another uh, term is instant provisioning of IT resources, provisioning of IT resources, so cost reduction. Now, less storage doesn't make, make any sense. You wouldn't have less storage with cloud. So the first three are, are correct. Less storage, we said that the cloud enable you to scale up and scale down, so less storage would make no sense. The third question, one of the disadvantages of FAST is a longer life cycle for software development. FAST stands for Platform as a Service, and we said that this is a type of cloud where um, so, uh, you, software developers can rent the tools uh, that they need in order to develop software. They don't have to install these tools. The tools will be installed on a hardware and there will be an operating system already in place. So definitely because they are using the cloud and the cloud vendor will provide the platform, then it will definitely shorten the life cycle for software development and not the opposite. Now the vendor is responsible for the tools, they're responsible for installing them, for maintaining them. So this is definitely false. Question number four, hybrid clouds combine the benefits of scalability, security, and cost effectiveness. So what's a hybrid cloud? A hybrid cloud is uh, like a part, is, is two, two clouds together, is a private and a, a public cloud. So whatever information you need to make accessible to everyone, or you don't have any uh, restrictions in terms of security, you would put it on the public cloud. Whatever is information that is sensitive, and sometimes you have regulations, government regulations that would restrict you from putting it on a public cloud, then you would put it on a private cloud. The hybrid allow organizations to go from the public to the private seamlessly. 
So you have that seamless connection between the two. So definitely you still have scalability because of the, the public cloud. You have security now because of the private cloud and cost effectiveness because again of the public cloud. So this is true. Which of the following type of clouds allow companies to move applications from dedicated data servers to cloud servers? So here, all they are saying, you are moving from one server to another. You are moving your applications from a dedicated data center to a cloud server, to a cloud server. So in that case, that would be an IS and infrastructure as a service. You don't need tools, you don't need anything. All you need is just the hardware. Because in the question it says, what type of the following clouds allow companies to move application? You already have your application from dedicated data centers to cloud servers. All you need is just a machine. And the only type of cloud that allow you to use just the, 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 the hardware is infrastructure as a service, which is the IS. When adopting a new information technology, you must make sure it is aligned with a corporate culture, corporate strategy, employee values, market trends. We talked about that in the very beginning of the semester and we said that when you, before you buy a new technology, you must make sure that this technology is aligned with your strategy, with your corporate strategy. As a business major, as a manager, future manager, you are all, always concerned about achieving your strategic goals, which are might be increasing your profit, increasing your market share, um, increasing innovation, coming up with innovative products. All of these are like strategic goals. So whenever you are buying a new piece of information, you want to make sure that this piece of information will help you achieve your strategic goals. So it's not about the culture. Don't worry about Sometimes you actually want to adopt technology in order to change the culture. So you don't want it to be aligned with the culture. And same thing with the employee values. Sometimes, as we said, we try to adopt technology in order to change employee values. And it's never market trends because the market trends keep on changing. It's very unlikely that you would change your strategic goals um, often. You would do that every five years, every uh, four years or three years, I mean, like three to five years is the definition of your strategic plan and your strategic goals. So, um, and that's definitely the lifetime of a technology. Usually when you buy a new technology, you're buying it for three years. It is more expensive to host applications on the public cloud than to host them internally on dedicated servers. This is false. And the reason for that is when you host applications on the public cloud, you're not paying for the hardware, you're not paying for the, the, the operating system, you're just paying for consumption, what you have consumed. So, while if you host them internally, now you have to buy the hardware, these dedicated servers, you have to buy them. You have to buy the operating system. You have to install the operating system on the servers. You have to develop the application yourself or buy the application. So all of that is a, a, an initial investment that's too high for a lot of companies. The solution would be to buy um, the, the use of these applications over the public cloud. So it's not expensive. It's actually less expensive if you use the public cloud, at least in the short run. 
So the answer is false. Which of the following type of clouds offer users development tools to build their own application on the cloud? That's platform as a service. We said that IS is infrastructure as a service, and that's renting the hardware. PaaS is renting the development tools. SaaS is renting an application, and there is nothing called WAS. So that D is definitely wrong. PaaS limits developers to the development tools offered by the PaaS provider. We said platform as a service provides you with development tools, specific ones, of course. They will not provide you with every single development tools. They will provide you with some development tools that they offer, that the PaaS provider offers. So, of course, it limits you to the development tools that are offered. Server virtualization allow more than one operating system to run on the same machine. Now, server virtualization is the partitioning. You partition, you divide a certain server, a machine, computer system or a machine into several partitions so that they act, that machine acts as if it is several machines at the same time. But in reality, it is one physical machine. One physical machine partitioned, divided into several partitions. Each partition um, has its own operating system, own application, and so on. So with server virtualization, of course, you allow more than one operating system to run on the same machine. Those of you who have Apple, they may have already boot camp their, their machine or use parallel in order to run it as Windows and as Mac at the same time. So that's, that's um, a form of virtualization. All of the following are advantages of public cloud, except low cost, we said that public cloud is less expensive than hosting your application on a dedicated server. All maintenance cost is taken care of the provider, that's true. Single tenancy, meaning you are the only one on that machine. Single tenancy, that's incorrect. Actually, one of the distinguishing characteristics of the public cloud is, is multi-tenancy is that on one machine, on one server, we have several organizations, the data of several organizations hosted on uh, one server. So there is, the, it's, mul it's always multi-tenancy unless it is a private cloud. Provider offers the RAM, the processing power and storage capacity. Yes, they do. You only provide Either you use just the data, like you use the application like SaaS, Software as a Service, or you provide the, the application like Infrastructure as a Service, or you use the tools in order to build an application, and that's on PaaS. So in all cases, the provider provides you with the RAM, the processing, and storage capacity. Among the advantages of server virtualization, again, server virtualization is the partitioning of the machine into several partitions so that each partition hosts a particular application or a particular operating system and so on. And it appears, it acts as if it is multiple machines when in fact it is just one. So is this better utilization of servers? Yes, because now instead of wasting resources, instead of buying a server and only utilizing 20% of it, now you are utilizing 60% of it. Is it energy efficiency? Of course. So I don't have to 
run uh, several servers and they 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 um, emit a lot of heat and they use a lot of energy so it is energy efficiency when you, you do server virtualization flexibility in reallocation of cpu power and memory resources among the different virtual machines so with server virtualization we said that we partition uh, the machine into different partitions Part of the advantages also of server virtualization is the ability of the operating system running on the server to reallocate CPU power. Let's say we partitioned it into three equal partitions. And then later on, after a month, we find out that one application, one partition is only utilized 10%. We can scale it down we can reallocate CPU power away from that partition because it's not used. So the advantages are all of the above. Better utilization of the server, energy efficiency, flexibility and reallocation of the CPU, CPU power and memory resources. So it's all of the above. The goal of information technology nowadays is to allow departments to act independent of each other. Do we want departments not to share information, to act totally independent of each other? That's definitely not a goal. Increase data redundancy. That means that you want repetition of the data. So a department creates the data, like let's say sales, and then you want purchasing to repeat the data again. Definitely that's not a goal. To integrate across the different functional units, do you want to share information and integrate across the functional units so that they share information, they align their processes? Yes. Provide answers to all organizational problems, even though that might be uh, a dream. <laughs> it is not... A realistic goal. An information technology department should run as a cost center. A cost center is a center that is treated as if the expenses are overhead expenses. So you have to incur the expenses no matter what. Definitely, we don't want to run information technology that way because you will end up buying a lot of technology without even worrying whether it is increasing your profit, increasing or decreasing your cost and so on. You want to run the information technology department as a profit center. So they should be responsible for realization of profit. Of course, people may ask, how come you cannot sell uh, the information technology? So why, how come we would treat it as a profit center? My answer is that information technology that I buy, that I invest, need to help me reduce the cost or increase my profit. So I have, I have to compare before the information technology adoption and after the adoption of the information technology. And I have to see that either I decrease the cost or I increase my profit. If both of these don't happen, then there is a big question. Why did you invest in that information technology? So the answer for that one is false. And the last question. When using services of a cloud, an organization is priced based on its size the industry the company belongs to, the number of employees within a company, the amount of resources they consume over the cloud. We said that the pricing for the cloud is called consumption-based pricing. It is based on your consumption. So it is the amount of resources that you consume over the cloud that will determine. It's not your size. It's not the industry that you belong to. It's not the number of employees because not all employees may use the service. Okay, so that's that's all for for this quiz, and I will uh, have another video for the second quiz.
or I may close that one. Here is the second quiz and uh, this one has uh, 25 questions so we'll try and go fast on this one. The Internet of Things, we said the Internet of Things is um, will be or they started working on it where wearables and devices around the house will also be connected to the Internet. So it's not just your phone and your computer but uh, things that you wear and things that you use on a daily basis, your car, uh, your uh, washing machine, your refrigerator, your um, walking shoes, all of these will be able to transmit information about you and will collect information about you, will provide, will download information to your phone or to your computer about usage, how you use these uh, devices. So the Internet of Things will allow an individual to access, uh, access to any information in the world, to be very smart, to have access to the internet 24 seven, to have more devices connected to the internet. D is the right answer. It is not uh, access to any information in the world because there will still be security issues and will be security rules will be enforced. So you will not have access to all information and definitely cannot guarantee to make you very smart and we currently have internet access 24 7 so that's definitely not the objective of the internet of things but it is to have more devices connected to the internet uh, that's that's what uh, what it is okay. second question all of the following are challenging challenges facing the cloud except so security and privacy, definitely. We said anything that's put on a public cloud um, pose security problems or challenges. Reliability, yes, because if the machine is down, then you will um, you will have problems with with it. It will not be available. The service will not be available, so it may not be reliable. Scalability is not is not a challenge because one of the advantages of the cloud is scale up and scale down and we talked about that in the previous in the previous quiz so that's definitely not a challenge maintenance is is um is a challenge A horizontally oriented IT architecture, horizontally oriented IT architecture. That means an architecture that is connected horizontally, which means the vertical, the functional units are integrated, are connected. Refers to an architecture that is customized to the individual needs of each functional area. No, a fragmented architecture, horizontally oriented definitely is not fragmented an architecture that is standardized across the functional areas it doesn't well horizontally oriented doesn't mean that it is standardized an integrated architecture where software across the organization can you communicate and share information that's the right information horizontally oriented IT architecture is an architecture that is integrated that allow that there is communication across the functional areas. When hosting your website on a cloud, you need to determine the amount of space you want to rent before you sign the contract. We've already covered that in the previous quiz. So, and we said that the right answer is you can scale up or scale down depending on the demand. So you only pay for what you consume. When using services of a cloud, an organization is priced based on the amount of resources they consume over the cloud. That was also from the previous quiz.
One of the main challenges posed by the consumerization of IT is security. Consumerization of IT. That's when the consumer, you and I, are actually pushing or because we use we are our own device, we are forcing organizations to create applications and provide services because we um, are using our own devices. So one of the main challenges posed by the consumerization of IT, and that's the, the, the wave of where consumers are using their phones, their iPads, in order to access resources, IT resources, is security. That, that's of course true, because now you have different devices, not just the computers that you have within the organization, but you have several devices, different vendors, um, different operating systems trying to access your resource and you may not have security in place to protect your IT resources against all different um, brands and so on, different operating systems and so on. Among the problems that organizations experience with their IT architecture is standardization, fragmentation, high integration, all of the above. Now, standardization is actually a good thing within organizations, especially when we're talking about an IT architecture. We want it to be standardized. We don't want so many different uh, IT resources that don't talk to each other because that will create a problem with sharing information. So standardization is a good thing. Fragmentation is definitely not a good thing. If it is fragmented, that means they do not integrate, they do not share information. So um, among the problems that organizations experience with their IT architecture is fragmentation. Because we said standardization is a good thing, high integration is a good thing. So the only problem is, is fragmentation. You don't want fragmentation because if you have fragmentation, then you, you will not be able to integrate across the functional units. All of the following are effects of IT on U.S. industries, except few major players, fierce competition, big difference in the performance of leaders and laggers, increase in the cost of IT-supported operations. Now, on the slides, we talked about how IT have changed the U.S. industries, and we said Definitely, we have very few players now. We have very high competition among them. There is a big difference between the performance of the leaders and the laggers. The only thing that doesn't make sense is increase in the cost of IT-supported operations. Actually, when you support operations with information technology, their cost goes down. The cost of conducting an, an operation that is supported by IT goes down. So when you automate, definitely the operation, the cost of that operation will go down. The heavy use of technology in everyday activities created a culture of instant gratification. You want instant gratification. You want instant reward. You want instant access. Because the, the technology created that culture. We expect things to happen right in the moment. We are trying to search for um, the answer for a quiz question. You want Google to bring you that answer right away if it is provided somewhere. and we said 
PaaS is platform as a service limits developers to the development tools offered by the PaaS provider. That's true, because you just rent a particular set of tools, so you are limited to these tools. You know, there is no consortium, for example. No, it's only whatever that provider provides you with. The goal of the information technology nowadays is allow departments, we've already answered that question, and the answer is to integrate across the function, the different functional units. Which of the following are adding to the creation of more data every day? Social media, definitely. Vision recognition, a lot of data, the Internet of Things, yes, because now you have devices collecting information about you, so it's all of the above. When adopting a new information technology, you must make sure it is aligned with the corporate strategy. This is already covered. Choose all that are applicable to cloud hosting. Scalability, instant access, cost reduction, less storage. So it is all except less storage. Information technology lead to the emergence of new organizational structures. Let's think about it. Look at, at uh, Amazon, for example. It was a new, a totally new um, organization structure. We didn't have organizations before that don't have brick and mortar that are allowing, that are middlemen um, allowing sale through their website. So it was a new organizational structure. Of course, um, the Internet enabled a, a number of different organizational structures. Look at eBay. Now, a totally new or business model that was not available before that. To choose all the challenges that you believe we currently face because of the use of technology. Lack of privacy, obesity, increase in the gap between the rich and the poor, electronic surveillances, e-wastes, lack of information. So lack of privacy is definitely because now as we use more technology, a lot of information is captured about us and is, is, um, is actually traded is sold to other organizations. Obesity, yes, because of the fact that we do not move now more uh, as we used to. We are more tied to the computer. Increasing the gap between the rich and the poor, that's also happening because we said of the digital divide. Those who do not have access to the technology continue to be less and less um, wealthy or, or uh, have limited resources. Electronic surveillance, definitely, um, that's a problem. With the e-waste, I know there was um, um, a, a presentation th th that Group 1 did, and they talked about how you get, you, um, get uh, rid of digital devices. But here I was talking about the waste, the electronic waste here is the waste of, electro of um, information technology resources. Everyone has a computer, but how much of this computer is being utilized for work? And um, same thing for storage and so on. Lack of information, that's not true. We have an overload of information. So 
everything except for lack of information is this we already answered and we said no it should run as a profit center And car, that was an article that I talked to you about. It, um, it was titled, IT does not matter. Believes that IT does not matter because it is highly re replicable. It is complex. It is expensive. It's not readily accessible to everyone. And the answer is the number one. He said that because information technology is readily available to everyone and can be easily replicated, then it cannot provide competitive advantage. He didn't talk about it being complex. In fact, he said the opposite is that as technology advances, technology becomes so user friendly and simple. Uh, and he didn't talk about it as being inexpensive. He actually said that as the price go down, it becomes more accessible to every organization. So the correct answer that it is highly replicable and thus cannot provide Sustain competitive advantage. The cheapest deployment model of IT is build it yourself, definitely not. Rent through the cloud, that, that's a, a cheap one. Buy prepackaged solutions. Well, the problem is they may not fit your needs. Outsource to consulting firms. And with the prepackaged solutions, also you buy the whole thing, whether you use it or not. But with the cloud, you are uh, charged based on your consumption. So definitely the cheapest deployment would be rent through the cloud. Look at, for example, uh, Microsoft Office. You can buy, um, I think, Three of the of the software, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel for ninety-nine dollars, or you can rent it for just uh, ten dollar a month. So definitely renting through the cloud is is cheapest. Main objective of an IT organization should be to reduce the cost of operation. Yes, that's true. But the answer here, it says in all organizations. And that may not be true because we said that the strategic goals of the organizations differ. Some organizations focus on cost, other focus on innovation. So the, if it was the main objective of IT in organizations should be to reduce the cost of operation, that might be true. But now, in all organizations, the problematic word here is all. Now, that, that, that is false because some organizations do not um, buy technology. The strategic goals are to support innovation and thus to align the IT with the goals. The, it wouldn't be um, to reduce the operation. The cost of operation it would be to increase innovation, for example. The recent increase in U.S. productivity is mainly attributed to the use of Internet and enterprise systems. Yes. The IT architecture refers to hardware, software, people and processes, all of the above. We said the architecture involves everything. It is the hardware, it is the software, it's also the people that run the hardware and software along with the processes. When a company uses SAP software over the internet, now I'm using a software application over the internet, that is an example of SaaS. Software as a service, because I'm using the application. It's not just the hardware. If it was 
I'm renting a server that would be IS. I'm renting tools that would be PaaS. But here I'm using the application and that's SAS. Choose all that are applicable to cloud hosting, scalability, instant access, cost reduction, and less storage does not apply. To improve satisfaction with the IT operations within organizations, every functional unit should be allowed to purchase the software that best suit its operations. That is false because you will have, in that case, you will have fragmented IT. And we said that it will be hard also because you cannot um, integrate across the different functional units. You need to standardize across the organization so that you would be able to share information. So that's it for quiz the second quiz. Okay, this is quiz number four that you took uh, last Sunday. And in question number one, it says IT consumerization. And we said IT consumerization is um, the heavy use of uh, consumers, of mobile devices by consumers, which drive um, organizations to create new applications. So it is caused by the huge adoption of mobile computing. Uh, refers to the emergence of the individual consumer as the primary driver of software product design. That's true. The second question, the sharing of a cloud by a number of organizations that have a common goal is referred to as this is coming out of the group presentation and it is a community cloud. We said that uh, community cloud or they presented you with the, the term community cloud and they said that when you have a number of organizations that have a common goal and they're all sharing the same cloud that is referred to as a community cloud. When a company hosts its application on a third party dedicated server. So here, a third party, but it is a dedicated server. So it's dedicated only for that company. The service is referred to as IS, private cloud. That's true. Why? Because we are talking about hardware. So that's IS, infrastructure as a service. And it is a dedicated server. It's just for them. So it is a pi private cloud, so that's true. Which of the following vendors are currently offering PaaS platform as a service cloud solutions? It is Amazon and Microsoft. Now Dropbox is an application, so it is SaaS, software as a service. The same thing as Facebook. Facebook does not allow you tools to develop something new. They develop whatever is new. So Dropbox definitely is not, Facebook is not, but Microsoft through um, Azure, um, they are providing pass cloud solution and the same thing for Amazon through their Amazon Web Services. Wired communication had a more profound impact on individuals and businesses than wireless communication. At the beginning of the, my presentation, I told you that wireless and mobile uh, had much more profound impact on individuals and businesses than the wired. The internet did not have uh, that same impact as the wireless. 
so that's false all of the following add to the popularity of mobile except low cost of connectivity flexibility security accessibility well we know the one main problem really with mobile computing is security it is not as secure as the wired because of the fact that people can intercept the communication much easier than with the wired so there is there is of course low cost of connectivity look at how much uh, cost has been driven down for for wireless connection uh, flexibility is definitely flexible and allow you to access information anywhere anytime and it's very accessible but security is is the main issue all of the following are applications of NFC uh, except that's coming from the video that I showed you about near field uh, communication and um, in the video the guy talked about payment by phone you're able to uh, share files um, an application launching he said um, I touch the NFC uh, tag and I'm able to uh, start several applications at the same time control of the external environment that that's not that's not possible it's only things that you can do through on the phone but it does not control the external uh, environment the multi layers of a mobile platform are synergistic we talked about the layers of, of mobile being synergistic because they are developed by the same vendor no in fact in the presentation I said you have several vendors but they have they follow what we call standard interfaces so they you are able to have synergy between the layers vendors used standard interfaces to allow for easy communication that's the right one So the synergy between the layers is because their ability to communicate together and they are able to do that because of standard interfaces. All of the following are advantages of mobile learning except we talked about mobile learning in the class and we said that um, it allows you for to have immediate access to the information allow you to have continuity to so even when you leave the classroom you can continue to access information about the topic that you are interested in you can have several types of media um, so you have multimedia through youtube you have text you have um, the videos and audios and so on um, intelligent feedback is another increased focus is really a problem with mobile because you're always distracted from the the, the, the several triggers that you get so you, you, you may be using your phone in order to search for the internet and you get an email and you instantly um, alternate or go uh, to check your email so you don't have that increased focus that's the main problem of uh, mobile learning and um, the the internet in general like the the hypermedia the fact that you are always distracted between the different uh, applications that you are using on the same device Near field communication allow communication between mobile devices within a 10 meter range. Well, they allow communication between mobile devices, but not within a 10 meter range. It's actually a few centimeters. So that's false. That's again coming from the video.
choose all the technologies that are considered environmentally friendly mobile technology cloud computing application dedicated servers server virtualization mobile technology is definitely environmentally friendly because you don't have now to print as we used to same thing with cloud computing because you are reserving energy now companies are sharing the same computing resources application dedicated service that's definitely not environmentally friendly that means you have a server for every application every application has a de dedicated server so instead of sharing the same server now you have a server for every application so definitely that's not environmentally friendly server virtualization we said that that's environmentally friendly because of the fact that the same server is partitioned to host different applications at the same time mobile devices integrate what to provide the user with an enjoyable experience they integrate what the hardware the operating system mobile applications it's all of the above you have the hardware working with the operating system working with mobile applications all to provide an enjoyable experience to the user One of the drawbacks of cloud computing is consumption-based pricing. That's definitely an advantage. E-waste, there is no waste because you have consumption, um, preservation of energy. High consumption of energy, no. The only problem with cloud computing is vendor lock-on, which means that you tend to stick to the same vendor uh, once you have signed a contract with that vendor you you normally do not even if you find someone who's much cheaper or a little bit cheaper because you've already invested or um, started using the services of a particular vendor it becomes hard to switch so there is a switching cost there is a vendor lock on Check all the features that are promised by mobile devices, context and situation awareness, embedded intelligence, NFC, enabled, multi-band with. So it's definitely context and situation awareness. So we said that in the future, it's not just that they are aware of your location, but they are also aware of the role that you play and the situation that you are in. Embedded intelligence, that's definitely a feature NFC um, we said that uh, embedded intelligence is that the the mobile device will be able to provide you with statistics and not just descriptive but prescriptive statistics about what you should be doing differently in order to improve your performance we said NFC enabled allow you to pay by phone allow you to share files among um, with other friends for example that are in short distance with you but there is nothing called multi-bandwidth um, you have a what you want a, a really wide bandwidth to enable you to send for example video in a short period of time and so on but there is no multi-bandwidth so first three are the correct answer And the last question is, the amount spent by businesses on cloud computing is far less than the amount spent by individuals. That's definitely false. Organizations would, would have a larger budget and would definitely spend more on cloud computing than the individuals. So that's all for the quizzes.
so um, that's a review definitely it, it would be important for you to uh, look at that review and also before the test make sure that you cover all of the questions because the, the test will have fi almost 50% of the questions for the multiple choice uh, part of the test will come from the quizzes.